I want to jump into one other slide presentation that I have here on some ancient Hebrew inscriptions. Okay, we've talked about the ancient Hebrew alphabet. Now you're going to see some actual scripts that have been discovered in archaeology over the years with some of these as examples. I divide Hebrew up into four time frames. Early Hebrew, which is the pictographic. The Middle Hebrew, which is what most people call Paleo-Hebrew. Late Hebrew, the start of using the Aramaic script. And then Modern Hebrew, which is very similar to the Late Hebrew, but slightly different. This was found in the Saudi Arabian Peninsula, Sarabit El Kadim, I believe it's called. Some of you might have heard of it. If you go on the home page of my website, I've got a clip from YouTube from the Naked Archaeologist where he went down and actually looked at these. I mean, it's amazing. This, is, what is this right here a picture of? There's the, the Aleph, exactly. There's a picture of it. This thing, by the way, is uh, 3,500 years old. Man, that just amazes me. This is one's kind of hard to see, but there's the Lamed. It's the shepherd's staff. What does the Hebrew word Aleph Lamed spell? L. L. Then this is the letter Mem. Mem is used as a prefix to a word means from. So this is Ma'el, from God. Here's another example of the pictographic script. Okay, this is a Mem and a Tav. What's Mot? Death. Lamed, Bet, probably an Ayin, but it could be a Pei. Not sure. A Lamed and a T. I believe this is Ba'alt. Le, mot Le Ba'alt. Death to uh, the feminine form of Baal. Baal would be Mrs. Baal. <laughs> that, by the way, is just an educated guess. There's really not enough information here to actually make a uh, definitive translation, but that's pretty close. Anybody recognize that word right off the bat? Alephet. What's that word? Av. What does Av mean? Ten pole. There you go. Thank you. This is an, an exciting one. This one was found only a few years ago by a husband and wife archaeologist, archaeologist team. They were on the Nile River, and they went hiking up along this road, and they found this inscription. So this is in Egypt, and it's estimated it was written at around 20, uh, uh, 1800 B.C. That's almost 4,000 years ago. This is to date the oldest example of the pictographic script. But it says, and this again is an educated guess, Rav which is many, kum, rise, veha, which means and the, and then there's something here, I don't know what this word here is, and then I can't read the rest of it, a little washed. Ear, let ear to the city, uh, a rough guess of what it means. Scholars are saying that the oldest Hebrew goes back 2,000 years, or 3,000 years, and then a few years later, they find, oh, now we found out it's 2,500 years, oh, now we found out it's 2,800 years. You see, I believe Hebrew was the, the, the script used before, before the flood. I believe it goes all the way back to the beginning. And I think one day we might be able to prove it. This is some examples of the middle Semitic script, or Paleo-Hebrew. This is the Tel Dan inscription. This one's kind of cool. How many of you have heard it said that there is nothing found in the archaeological record that supports the biblical text? How many of you have heard that? A few. There, is not, there has never been one archaeological evidence found that proves anything in the Bible. I've heard it before, and it's flat wrong. And here's one example. This right here says, Melech Yisrael, king of Israel. Guess what it says right above it? Beit David, house of David. On, that, on two lines, we have the king of Israel and the house of David. That's exciting. Yes. This is an image of the Samaritan Pentateuch. The Samaritans are a group of people in Israel who never left the land. They, they stayed there. But their Torah scrolls that they use today still use the Middle Semitic script, the Paleo-Hebrew. Their version, by the way, is very different from our Tanakh. I just find it interesting they're still using Paleo-Hebrew. This is what's called the Temple Ostraca. And you'll see right here, Le Beit Yahweh, to the house of Yahweh. This is actually a, a receipt for a donation of three shekels to the temple of Yahweh, to the house of Yahweh. This, by the way, is the inscription that caused me to start learning Paleo-Hebrew because I was learning Hebrew like everybody else. I, I went to a synagogue with a friend of mine, learned the alphabet, and I started learning Hebrew that way. I picked up some books. 
Then I saw a newspaper clipping in my local paper with a picture of this, and they said that's a Hebrew scrub. That don't, that don't look like Hebrew. That's not the Hebrew I'm learning. I want to know what this is. So that's how I got started in all of this. How many of you heard that the Dead Sea Scrolls are all written in the modern Hebrew script or the Aramaic script? Most of the Dead Sea Scrolls are written in the Aramaic script, but some of them are still being written in the Paleo-Hebrew. Or what I was told is that Paleo-Hebrew stopped being used when Israel went into Babylon. They adopted the Aramaic script. And that's not true. It is for the most part, but they still use the Paleo-Hebrew even while they were in captivity and some of the Dead Sea Scrolls written between 100 B.C. and 70 A.D. are still being written in the Paleo-Hebrew. This is a uh, Greek fragment from the Septuagint, a very, very old fragment of the Greek Septuagint. The Greek Septuagint is a 2,000-year-old Greek translation of the Tanakh, okay, without going into too many details. And it's written in, in Greek. But right here in that little box, guess what that is? Yahweh written in Paleo-Hebrew. The Jewish scribes, whenever they were writing the name, even if it was using in the Greek or if they were writing in the, the, the Aramaic square script, whenever they came to Yahweh, they would always write it in the Paleo-Hebrew. This is the word Shema written in um, Paleo-Hebrew or Middle Semitic script. This was a piece of pottery, and it was just when the pottery was wet, they scribbled in their Shema. Notice the, you've got the Shin, the Mem, and the Ayin. Now, this is dated to about 600 B.C. That's the time frame they were using the Paleo-Hebrew. But this coin is around the time of Yeshua. You recognize the letters there? The Shin, the Mem, and the Ayin. It's the word Shema, meaning to hear. Paleo-Hebrew is still being used into the days of Yeshua. This is a Paleo-Hebrew inscription of the Ten Commandments. It's written in Paleo-Hebrew. Some of you will recognize this. Paleo-Hebrew, the Ten Commandments... This script was used around 800 B.C. 800, between 900 and 600 B.C. is when it was extensively being used. This inscription was not found in Israel. This inscription was not found in Egypt. This inscription was found in New Mexico. Some of you have heard of it. What's it called? The Las Lunas inscription. Las Lunas is the name of the town in New Mexico. And when it was originally discovered by the white man, because the Indians knew about it, they called it Mystery Mountain, the Indians knew about this rock, and they took some white men up there and showed it to them in 1855. And in 1855, nobody knew what Paleo-Hebrew was, let alone what it said. So the scholars saw it and thought it was Cherokee. The sad thing is, here is up at the top, is that top line. Anuchi Yahweh Elohecha Asher Hotzitecha. That's what it says. I am the Lord your God who takes you out by Mitzrayim, land of Mitzrayim. That top line right there is how it looked like a year ago. This is how it looks now. Somebody went up there and scratched that whole top line off. Okay, let's jump into the late Hebrew script. This is when it, they started adopting the Aramaic square, what we call square script. But if you'll notice, again, like I said before, whenever they came to the name of Yahweh, they recognized its uniqueness, and they would use the Paleo-Hebrew for the name of God, Yahweh. This is a, just an example from the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is a Nash papyrus. This is the oldest, the oldest fragment ever found of the Bible up until the Dead Sea Scrolls. This was dated about 200 B.C. But this was a fragment that was found about uh, 100 years ago, and it showed a Hebrew of the book. That's actually the Ten Commandments as well. The modern Hebrew script, if you open up a Hebrew Bible today, you go to the Bible bookstore, this is what you're going to see, something very similar to this. With the Nakud, the vowel pointing is in there. There's the, uh, the two major ones of the Aleppo Codex and the Codex Leningrad. Very similar, but two different traditions of the Hebrew. This is an interesting one. Cuneiform is, is Greek. It means wedge writing. And the Sumerians commonly use uh, Cuneiform to write their writings. But what's interesting is that this is not Sumerian, this is Hebrew, Ugarit. And Ugarit has 28 letters in their alphabet. And it's virtually identical to Hebrew, the language. It's virtually identical to just that they use cuneiform. Some people actually call this Hebrew cuneiform. (laughs) 